Welcome to the Origins Podcast and the Origins Project Foundation. I'm your host here, Lawrence Krauss, and I want to introduce what may be a new continuing series, which is uh, really um, goes back to one of our first guests and one of our most popular podcasts with none other than, than Noam Chomsky. I asked Noam if we could periodically update our discussion by talking about current events. So here you go, current events with Noam Chomsky. Iran. We've seen a principle, well, a new administration, in principle, having a very different attitude. In practice, not yet necessarily the case. But what do we do? There's, as, as, as we try and normalize what is clearly an abnormal situation in almost every way, when it comes to nuclear weapons, when it comes to sanctions, when it comes to diplomatic relations, what do we do? No. Well, for the time being, the Biden administration has simply taken up Trump's position on Iran. His rhetoric is slightly different, but if you look at the uh, actual policy, it's, there's very little daylight between them. Yeah. Uh, the facts are it's uncontroversial that uh, the United States uh, pulled out of the agreement actually in violation of Security Council orders, if anybody cares about such trivialities, uh, and uh, imposed very harsh sanctions on Iran with zero justification, uh, and uh, then says we'll only return to negotiations if Iran uh, initiates it and agrees in advance that uh, we're not going back to the joint agreement, the JCPOA, but only to a much harsher agreement. That's basically the facts. Uh, Biden's continued with them, no change. A little different rhetoric. Yeah, the rhetoric is different. The rhetoric is different. The, 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 the claimed desire to enter into a nuclear agreement is there, but, but, but I don't see the carrot uh, for Iran well, Trump also, was, Trump was also willing to enter into a nuclear agreement, as long as it was a much harsher one. Yeah, much harsher one. And Biden has said the same. I didn't but, realize that Biden, I thought they were willing to go back to something close to the, I thought the sticking point was, was that, that, that Iran first has to stop doing what they've done in the last year or two. That's part of it. And, and, and Iran first. says, we'll enter an agreement if we but don't have to stop. If you look beyond but we're not going to go back to that agreement. It has to be one which uh, deals with what they call Iran's terrorist activities, uh, its uh, missile programs and many other things, which had nothing to do with the JCPOA. Mm -hmm. So it's essentially, let's go back to the harsher agreement, to Trump's willingness to accept a much harsher agreement. Actually, the discussion of all of this is quite interesting. Because there is a very, I mean, when Trump says the agreement should be renegotiated, I quite agree. There's a much better agreement. Let's impose, a, institute a nuclear weapons free zone in the region. Let it solve the whole problem with intensive inspections. We know they work. They work during the JCPOA. U.S. intelligence agrees. Atomic energy. Everyone agrees. So what's the problem? Iran strongly in favor of it. Arab states have been in favor of it for 25 years. Uh, the entire global south is strongly in favor of it. Uh, Europe doesn't raise any objections. Uh, every time it comes up, the United States vetoes it. Obama was the last one. Uh, everybody knows the reason, but nobody's allowed to say it. You're not allowed to inspect Israel's huge nuclear system. In fact, as you know, the United States doesn't even recognize its existence. Yeah. It says we don't, we don't know. Of course they know. As soon as you recognize its existence, U.S. law comes into play. Symington Amendment, others, which read literally, and you know, lawyers can argue, but they at least indicate strongly that U.S. aid to Israel is illegal under U.S. law, not international law. 
on a U.S. law um, because and, because of Israel's nuclear weapons program. And nobody wants to open that door. So therefore, we have to face potential war with Iran to ensure that there's no uh, inhibition on the huge flow of aid to Israel. If the American people knew about this, they would not be happy about it, including people who don't like aid for all the wrong reasons across the spectrum. Bunch, you know, of, Jews, bunch of Jews yeah. getting us into a war. You know. Yeah, no, exactly. It would play into a lot of a lot of a lot of yeah for different reasons people would be very upset now i was intrigued in this sense in this regard about why uh, maybe maybe this plays into it but maybe maybe in the context of what you just said it's natural it seemed illogical for me to israel for israel to launch that preemptive attack on 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 um Iran's nuclear weapons uh, or nuclear f- facilities because it it effectively sort of sabotaged for the time being, anyway, any any ability of uh, or the hope that this that there could be diplomatic discussions towards a, a nuclear weapons treaty. That was the point. It was very successful. I mean, didn't really succeed. They hoped they could derail the agreement. They hoped that Iran's reaction would be strong enough so that it would elim- it would uh, break down the negotiations. Uh, Iran was backed off they were just had a kind of symbolic reaction but what but, 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 but breaking down the negotiations would be uh, are you arguing uh, are you ha- suggesting that israel wants them to break down so that the united states will Absolutely. enter a war with Ar- Ar- iran they don't want to go to war but they don't want negotiations that would eliminate you know that would uh, not be harsh enough now, the jcpoa would have ended for a long period, long as long as matters, uh, any concern if there is any about nuclear, Iranian nuclear weapons. But uh, ask yourself a prior question. Why is anyone concerned about Iranian nuclear weapons? I mean, they'd never use a nuclear weapon, even if they had one. The country would be vaporized in five minutes. Okay. One could say that about any country, North Korea as well, of course. No, but not not really. In this case, they have no defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, if they even armed a nuclear weapon, a weapon on a missile, they probably wiped down. So nobody expects them to use, in fact, including U.S. intelligence. When U.S. intelligence describes to Congress the threat of Iran, what they say is, if they're developing nuclear weapons, which we don't know, it would be part of their deterrent strategy. Who doesn't want a deterrent strategy? Countries that want to rampage freely in the region. There are two of them, United States and Israel. That's the threat of Iran. Okay. Uh, It is true that, in fact, indeed, historically, it looks like precisely that case that I mean, that's what bothers me about this whole uh, this whole approach in general is that it's very, very logical for countries to want to have uh, nu- to develop nuclear weapons, because history suggests to us that countries that have nuclear weapons are not invaded and countries that don't have nuclear weapons are invaded. And, and well, but you see, that aside, we don't have any indication that Iran's trying to develop nuclear weapons. Very likely they're trying to develop Nuclear capability mm-hmm. means you're close to it. If you have to, you can turn a screw. Mm-hmm. I mean, half the countries in the world have that. If you have nuclear energy these days, you're not that far from nuclear nuclear mm-hmm. weapons. So probably they want to have the option of developing nuclear weapons if the situation arises. And they would be a deterrent yeah. to countries that are attacking them all the time. Um, the U.S. is at war with Iran. The U.S. cyber attack against Iran is what the Pentagon calls in its official documents war that justifies a military response. So, yeah, we're openly at war with Iran. We're proud of it. We boast about it. Obama was very proud of it. Uh, Israel, of course, is proud of carrying out uh, assassinating Iranian nuclear engineers, destroying facilities, 
and killing people anywhere they want. It's not a secret, you know. And uh, there's no indication that Iran is going beyond an effort probably to develop nuclear capacity capability. But the U.S. and Israel don't want that because they don't want deterrence. They want subordination. And anyone, and this is not just the Middle East. This is U.S. policy everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, why are we, why, why have we been viciously attacking Cuba for 60 years? Do we think Cuba is going to invade us? In <laughs> fact, we know the reason. It's official. You read the documents from the early 60s. State Department says uh, Castro, the threat of Castro is that he's carrying out successful defiance of U.S. policies going back to the Monroe Doctrine. Uh, no good mafia don could tolerate that. <laughs> well, okay, but let me ask you, it seems to me that that I I Iran, you know, one, we, ne we don't know if they're trying to develop nuclear weapons, but, or if they're developing them, but it seems to me that it's in there that I, 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 when I look from, from my vantage point, that they were accelerating efforts to achieve nuclear capability, that it's in their interest to do that precisely to encourage the United States to, to have some, to, to enter into some diplomatic treaty uh, that may reduce sa sanctions. But well, is that there, not the case? There are two versions of what happens. There's the official version, and there's a version given by scholar, the serious scholarship, like Trita Parsi, who's one of the most distinguished scholars on contemporary Iran, has written about it. Uh, he argues that the Obama administration finally agreed to negotiations because they saw that Iran was very quickly developing more advanced center, centrifuges, getting close to nuclear weapons, they figure we better try to negotiate now, agree to negotiate. That's Parsi's version. I think it's quite plausible. Then there's 100% of commentary here. Uh, Obama's courage and integrity uh, compelled the Iranians to capitulate and agree to negotiations. So as usual, you take your choice. Yeah, no, the, the former is certainly the case. And I, and and I, you know and and I think I've talked to well a former colleague of yours and a former I guess professor of mine I mean uh, Ernie Moniz who was at MIT who was involved in the negotiations themselves it was clear that it was clear that they that they were acting in a rational way that 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 be, in order to head off and 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 produce a remarkable diplomatic response which also would also have did something humanitarian which would also relieve sanctions. And allow the Iranian people to to not be to not suffer so much, which is and something else we don't talk about so much. That's right. I mean, the sanctions are murders, and of course they're you know they're made particularly savage by the Trump administration, but kind of that's their hallmark. Let's kick everybody in the face when we can, uh, and it's right in the middle of pandemic, so it's preventing Iran from getting vaccines from dealing with the pandemic. The idea is to make the population suffer as much as possible. I mean, I don't have to tell you, sanctions regimes hit the population. Not the they regime. don't hit the leadership. Yeah, They're sure. Yeah. Yeah. And the idea is to foment rebellion from within by making it so miserable that you can, that they hopefully will. That's the, that's the plan yeah. anyway. But now, now given that, given that it's... I think we should, it's interesting to look at the historical record. So take the case of Nicaragua, very well documented. The first Bush administration very openly and explicitly informed the Nicaraguan people when the election was coming up in, uh, uh, in 1990 that either you vote for our candidate or we'll make life miserable for you. We'll continue the terrorist war, we'll continue sanctions, you won't be able to survive. Okay, they voted the way the United States wanted. Take a look at the press afterwards. The United Times, New York Times, my favorite, headlines, victory for US fair play. You know, <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> That's the country we're in. Mm-hmm. You smash somebody in the face, they capitulate. You talk about how wonderful we are. Look at our victory for fair play. Yeah, we're see. seeing that everywhere and internally as well as people are censored. That's, uh, that's the idea in Iran. If, uh, if they capitulate, it'll be a demonstration of our nobility and our commitment to fair play and justice and the highest ideals.